What is a function? You've heard the word before. What is a function? It can be an exponent, it can be an X, it can be anything. It's just a function simply means it works, it operates. And that's what this thing is dealing with. The formal definition of what we're looking at here is a function is a correspondence between a first set of numbers called the domain and a second set of data called the range. It says that each member of the first set corresponds to exactly one member of the range. Or the second set. Okay, now here's, they, they chose these words for a reason. What does correspondence mean? Think of the old days, like the old black and white movies back in the old days in the 50s and 60s and 40s. What did correspondence refer to back then? It, I mean, it's still done today, but it's mostly used back then. What is correspondence? It would relate to that, but... Correspondence, it may be before your, way before your way before your times. Correspondence is what they called mail. When when people used to write letters and send mail, that's correspondence. So that's what it says here: is a function is a corresponding a correspondence where you have one set, which is called a domain, corresponding where each member of the first set, the domain, corresponds to exactly one member in the second set. So if we had three people here, A, B, C, and one, two, three here. So each person, each member here corresponds to one and only one person in the second set. That's what correspondence is all about. In other words, can you write the same letter to two different people? No, if, if I write a letter and mail it, that one letter has to go to one person. I can write another one and say, but that won't be the same letter. It, it, it'd be the same stuff in there, but it won't be exactly the same letter. So that's what this is saying. So for an example, if I had the set in this first set, negative six, six, negative three, three, and zero. And this one corresponds to 36, nine, and zero. Is this a function?
Remember, to be a function, you have to have one-to-one -one correspondence. Each person in the first set has to correspond to exactly and only one person in the second. Does anybody in this one have two letters going out? So then it's a correspondence. It's a function. Each one of these goes to only one number. So this is an example of a function. Um, here we have the presence. And here we have the judges that they got into office. And those are the judges they got into office. So, Bush Sr. got Clarence Thomas into judge, Supreme Court. Bill Clinton got Stephen Beyer and Allen Ginsburg. Bush Jr. got Altamayor and Rob, I believe Roberts. And Obama got Kagan and Sotomayor. Does this represent a function? Why not? Yeah, because one person, at least one person, got more than one person there. So this is not a function. Now, remember we talked about domains and ranges. How does that relate to points on a graph? Domain are the X values. Range are the Y values. This will make it much easier when we start looking at these things later on. Okay, if it's not a function, remember a function has to have one and only one correspondence. If it's not a function, then it's what's called a relation. A relation is a correspondence between a first set called the domain and a second set called the range such that each member
of the domain, the first set, corresponds to at least one member of the range. Example, the president's one, where each member of the domain matched with at least one member of the range. Now, let's look at how these things look like in sets. Example three. We have these numbers, nine, negative five, nine, five, and two, four. Is this a function or a relation? Why? Why? Do they? Is it the y values or the x values that's important? It's relation because it's important. You have to look at the x values. If the x values are the same, the y values better be the same. But since this one has two different y value, x values, two different y values, it's relation. So what's the domain? And what's the range of the set? Nine, two, what? And what's the range? Very good. B. We have negative two, five, five, seven, zero, one, four, negative two. Is it a relation or a function? How do we know? Exactly. If none of the X values are the same, then it's automatically a function. So this is a function. And the domain It's just the X values and the range are the Y values. And we, as was shown earlier, if you have multiple of the same numbers, you only, only put it once in, in your list. Is that a relation or a, or a function? It's a function because all the x's are different. The domain? Yeah, 
just the x values, which would be 3, 2, negative 3, 0. And the range, 5. Relation or a function? Uh -oh, we have a smackdown. What's the tiebreaker say? It's what? What about it? Is it a function or a relation? Ooh, you win. It's a function. Why is it a function? It's the same point. Two five and two five are the same point. If you have the same x's, you better have the same y's. If, if it's that, then it's a function. If we had different y values, then it'd be relation. Very good. And we know the domain and range. Very good. This is a function. Okay, let's look at function notation. Originally, we had equations that looked like this. And in order for you'd be able to work this out. What do I have to do? I have to give you an x value that you can't find. You have to give it to you. Yeah. So I, I would have to say something like if x equals 2. And then what would you do from here? Place 2 in place of x and work it out. And then invariably, since we have those, that would be the location of that dot. Every every equation pairing in numbers gives you a solution at a point on a graph. But this is pretty time consuming to write this way. Instead of writing the y value, we put the function notation. Instead of y, we put f of x, or this is the name of the function. You can put any letter you want to, except x, of course, or y, because those are usually given in the equivalents. So I could say, and this is your argument. What goes in place of each x value in the equation. The way this is read is The function f of variable x. Because the, the function you're looking at is the name, the function f of variable x. This defend defines what we're going to change inside there. In short, this is read f of x. Let's compare the purpose of both of these. 
I want you to find three values. When x equals zero, when x equals two, when x equals negative one. So three times zero is zero, zero plus two is two. Three times two plus two. Three times two is six plus two is eight. Three times negative one plus two. It's negative three plus two is negative one. The working out parts is going to be the same no matter what. It's just that instead of writing all this stuff here with functions, I would simply have to do it this way. And you know that this is going to refer. The name goes to this function. I'm going to use this equation. And then it's the same thing. Just whatever goes inside there. The rest of the working out part is the same. Am I limited to putting only numbers inside there inside the inside these parentheses what am i am i limited to what i can put in there i can put anything i want to in there for example let's look at example four so f of x is equal to 2x squared minus x plus three. F of zero, F of negative seven, F of five A, and F of A minus four. So, what's A going to be? Mm -hmm. We have 2 times 0 squared minus 0 plus 3. 0, 0 answers 3. Graphically, what does this 3 represent? You set x equal to zero, it's the y-intercept. The constant is always the y-intercept. You're close. And the other one, now we do is negative seven. Two times negative seven squared minus negative seven plus three. Negative seven squared is 49. Negative and negative makes it a positive. Two times 49 is 98. Seven plus three is 10. 98 plus 10 is 108.
So far, so good. Now we're putting in an equation. So we have two times five a squared minus five a plus three. What is 5a squared going to be? What about a what? Because remember, 5a squared is 5a times 5a. Yeah, 5 times 5 is 25. a times a is a squared. So it's going to be 25a squared minus... 5a plus 3. 2 times 25 is 50. a squared minus 5a plus 3. And that's as far as I can go. Why can't I go any further? Can't, yeah. And they're not like terms. This is a, this is a squared, so I can't. Once I define what A is, then I can put it in there and go. And the next one. 2. A minus 4 squared minus A minus 4 plus 3. Notice how I put the middle term in parentheses. Or whenever you put in substitute, it's always safer to put it in parentheses first. So nothing gets mixed up. All right, now what do we do first? This one, how do we do that one? How do you mean? No. I'm glad you said that, no. What, what this means is A minus four squared really means a minus four times a minus four. Because there's a plus or minus inside there, you can't distribute. Unlike this one, if it's multiplied divided, we can distribute. But if there's a plus or minus, we can't. So we have to do the FOIL technique. A times a is a squared. Positive times negative is negative. A times four is four a. Negative times positive is negative. Four times A is four A. Negative times negative is positive. Four times four is 16. Combine like terms. Negative four A minus four A is negative eight A plus 16. So that's what we're going to put into that part. Two times a squared minus eight a plus 16 minus a minus four plus three. Distribute to get rid of the parentheses. 2 times a squared is 2a squared. Positive times negative is negative. 2 times 8 is 16a. Positive and positive is a positive. 2 times 16 is 32. The negative, negative times positive is negative a. Negative and negative is a positive 4 plus 3. Combine like terms, 2a squared, negative 16a minus 1a, they're both negative, so we add them, 16 plus 1 is 17,
32 plus 7 is 39. That's going to be the hard, that's going to be the worst part about this class is all these steps that take forever. This example here, I'm going to give you two different ways. First way, you would just plug these in there, wouldn't you? Work it out. What would you get if you plugged in negative 3 in this equation? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you have negative 3 squared minus 6. So it's 9 minus 6 is 3. One squared is one, one minus six is negative five. That's one way. What if I gave you a graph to interpret these from? This is stuff. Uh, I'm going to start giving you the guys these things as we start going further. There. If I give you this graph here and ask you to find f of negative 3, That's what we just did in this example here. At, this represents what? What what axis is this number from? That's the x-axis. So what I would do I would go to negative 3 and then see where the number is on the graph. That gives me the answer. At f of 1 I go from one down to here and see where it matches on the graph. So that's how you would do it if you had the graph instead of these plugging in there. Because what would happen is if I give you a graph, I don't have to give you the equation. If I don't give you the equation and ask you this question, then you have to interpret at negative three, what is my y value? At one, what is my y value? You have to work it that way. Or conversely, if I said f of x equals let me stick a number here. f of x equals negative 2. What would you tell me the answer would be? Or if I gave you this, I said f of x is equal to 2, or negative, that's a negative 2? Yeah. If I said negative 2, is this the x or the y? The y value. So what I would do, I'd go to the y value is negative 2. I'm looking for the x values. I'd go over to the graph and see that it equals negative 2 and it equals positive two. So you, you, can, you can be faced with those kind of questions all the time. Okay, last thing to uh, kick you guys out. So okay, reason being because it's asking us to graph cubic functions, quadratic functions and, and radicals. And we haven't talked about those yet. We'll, we'll do those when we get to those at the end of this chapter. But what we talked about so far, about a function, remember, for every x value, you can have how many y values? 
one. It has to be one and only one to be a function. So how do we test that if we give you a graph? If given a graph, then use the vertical line test. The vertical line test says this. If you draw a vertical line and it crosses the graph at more than one place or one yeah one place then it is not a function if you draw a vertical line and it crosses the graph more than once it's not a function the example is that a function because I could draw, if you think about it, here's the X value and I have two separate Y values. So it's not a function. So I'm gonna give you six pictures. I want you to tell me if they're functions or not. A, yes or no? Yes, it is because it passes the birth by B. No, because it fails the vertical line test. C, not a function, fails it. D, fails it. E, yes, because it, it costs only once. F, function. Because the only place we have to look at is right here at negative one. Note it, it's a, and I know I should sort of blow it up if I could. But notice that that's a dark circle and that's an open circle. So it only crosses once because that point doesn't exist. So that one is a function. It's not continuous, but it's a function. The next, we're gonna end up this, this part of the chapter, we'll end up doing um, finding domains and ranges of graphs and of functions. That's we'll do that next time. All right. So I will leave it leave it up to you guys. If you 